medical school, specialized in psychic, psychic, mental disorders. Brilliant mind, smart. Get him in here, will you, Harold? Yes. John Muller, parents deceased. One brother, Frederick, accountant, New York Civil Service Welfare Department. Worked his way through Standish University. Four years pre-medical, two years medical college. Withdrew suddenly. Practiced psychoanalysis without a license, Miami, Florida. Released, no evidence. Sold stock in non-existent oil wells, Cincinnati, Ohio. Released. Maintained hotel suite, lavish spender. Apprehended Middleton, payroll hold up. Convicted, sentenced. There's a bus ticket to Los Angeles. That's the address of the Michael John Company. What's the Michael John Company? Medical supply house. Your line, you ought to make good at it. Who we'll fixed it up, my brother Fred? The personnel manager there will have your record. Nobody else will know anything about you. It's a good job, decent life. 35 bucks a week. You won't take it. No? You'll be back here. You're a smart man, Muller. Good luck, Muller. Hiya, Marcy. Cigarette? Yeah, no, I don't smoke. Who came up north, Marcy? Al, big boy Fritz. It's all set down there. They're ready for you. You got a lot to make up for, huh, Johnny? Who's she? Just a second, Johnny. Dear, what's your name? Hi, Johnny. Pretty nice dump, huh? Real comfortable. Yeah? Comfortable and crummy. What about the boys? What are you so impatient about? Just out of the clink and you got ants already? So pickle yourself, I see. No, I take it easy. How long have you been up here with the squirrels? Oh, about two years. You want one, Johnny? You said he had a good setup? Yeah. Safe and sure. I got my own slot machine route now. Big time, eh, Marcy? I bet that brings you 90 bucks a week. Oh, more than that. Sometimes as much as a hundred and a quarter. Safe and sure. You're getting to sound like my brother. Maybe you ought to take civil service. Hey, uh, Johnny. Uh, what do you got in your mind? What do you got planned? Hey, Johnny! You'll see. Good to see you, chum. Hello, big boy. Nice to have you back. Good to be out, eh, Johnny? Sure. Lost a lot of time, though. Got to make a killing. Oh, Take time for a beer. What's exciting? Mm, nothing. Same old thing. I got a job in a poker joint. Pays good, though. Sometimes they even give me free chips. That's nice. A little handout now and then. Oh, what's wrong with that, Johnny? Still think you got the world by the tail? Hello, Rosie. Well, we got the brain back. Glad you came. Sit down, you guys. Sit down. Get some food. What's the matter with you? Got to take chances. That's the overhead in our racket. Now listen. I had a lot of time to think. Got it all worked out. You're going to knock over off your Stanzik gambling joint. No, Johnny. Why not? Not Stanzik. You'd need an army to take him. Just as soon have the feds on me as his boys. What happened to you? You two gone soft? Johnny, you know the setup. We'd never get away with it. He's got trigger men all over the joint. And the place is always crowded. That's it. Lots of people. And lots of money. The take ought to be 200,000 for us. And people, they never notice. They're all wrapped up in themselves. Now listen, this is what we do. We take two cars. We drive south all night and all day. 
Next night, we go to stand six. One guy stands by the cars, one takes the light switch. Three of us walk in, just like players. We get the cash quietly, no fuss, nobody notices. You hope? Nobody notices. The guy at the switch pulls it on time, the place is dark, we make our getaway. Well? Charlie, you remember Dick Bolter? Sure. He tried to knock off Stancic. He got away, no dough, but he got away. But still, Stancic's guys got him. It took him two years, but they found him in Paris and put a meat stamp on him. In Paris, Johnny. That's the way Stancic operates. I don't like it. What are you crying for, Marcy? He don't know who we are. What can he do? What do you say, big boy? I don't know, Johnny. I don't know. You say you got things all figured out. You always done pretty good before, but I don't know. Al, two hundred thousand? That's a lot of dough for just a minute's work. Rosie, if everything goes like you said, fine. But if we foul up somewhere, we won't. Count me out, Johnny. You forget easy, Marcy, don't you? Who covered for you at the trial? You would have been in prison with me if I hadn't watched what I said on the stand. And now you try to welsh me. Okay, Johnny. I don't like it, but I'll go along with you. Well? And we all set. Honey, I have to whip you guys into picking up a fortune. No, I think <laughs> Put the cash in the envelopes. All of it. I can't show.
How many got away? Two. And the other car. Who are they? What's their names? Marcy and Johnny Muller. Get him. If it takes 20 years, get him. Okay, you can go. You mean we just walk away? Just walk away. Not gonna let him get away, are you, Bullseye? You got Rosie, the big boy. They'll rat on us. They'll tell them everything they know about us, who we are, everything. They'll find us. They'll get us. A guy likes chance if those guys don't stop till they get even. Believe me. Now oh, shut up, boss. How come you didn't figure the outside lamps? You're smart. How come you didn't know they worked on their own generators? You got the money, haven't you? That's 60 grand. 60 grand? I'd be better off working for some slob at 30 bucks a week. What good is it? What am I going to do with it? You're looking for me in every hotel in every town. You get Stancic's joint. You realize that? Rocky Stancic. You know a place you can hide out from Rocky Stancic? Go on, tell me. You're smart, educated, college man. <laughs> I'm through with you. I'm going to blow. Mexico. South America. On my own. As far as I can get. We'll give you every protection you need. We know how it is. You want to make a new start in a new city. You want to get away from your old surroundings. Now, nobody's going to know where you are or who you are. From now on, you're just another employee. Same as everyone else here at Michael Johnson. Yes, Mr. Anderson. I guess it's time I settled down and took my big brother's advice. Regulations here, I only enforce them. In the future, will you kindly see that your desk lamp's switched out before you leave? Yes, Mr. Thompson. What do you want me to do with that? Deliver them. It's a rush order, some books that have to go to the medical building. Why? What is it? Just a minute. Don't you like to run errands? Is it beneath you? Too good for the job? You can always quit, you know. There's no law that says you have to work here. Yes, Mr. Thompson. Yes. I don't want anything. Who are you? Who sent you? Sent who? Me? What are you following me for? Oh, yes, of course. <laughs> that, that was all a mistake. Mistake? You, yes, you see, I, I thought I recognized you. I, I thought you were somebody I know. Shh. You look exactly like him. The same features, the same build. Don't give me that. <laughs> Please. There's nobody that looks like me. Believe me, 
You look exactly like him. Except, of course, for the scar. Scar? Yes, he's got a scar on his right cheek. No, I mean, I mean his left cheek. Well, I, I, I don't remember. You don't remember. Believe me, honest. His name is Bartok. He's a professional colleague. I mean, we have offices in the same building, the medical building over there. He's a doctor, and I'm a dentist. Here. You can smell the iota from her mouth. Me, my wife always complains. She says it's in all my suits. Look. Beat it. Yes. Yes, thank you very much. Doesn't start until 10.30. I just talked to you on the phone. How'd you get here so fast? You don't think it was easy to do, do you? Hello, Victor. Oh, wait a minute. I'm not... Oh, my. It's all right. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't know what to say. I understand. No, you see, you look just like Dr. Naturally, Bartok. Naturally, so I... you're his secretary, so naturally... Yes, that's you... the way it was. No. Let go. I mean it. What can I do for you? What more could any reasonable man ask? No, no, I didn't mean that. It was a slip. Slipped my eye. That's Freud. What do you know about Freud? You gave yourself away, the subconscious mind coming out in spite of yourself. You're just a wild bundle raring to go. What are you, anyway? An analyst or a patient? Neither. An innocent bystander, I guess. What do you want? Nothing. Then what'd you come up here for? You told me I looked like Bartok. I was curious. Just that? That's all. The next thing you know, a girl, a perfect stranger to me, comes up and... Dr. Bartok isn't here. Goodbye. Wait a minute. A thing like this upsets a fellow. Goodbye. What do you mean, upsets a fellow? What are you doing tonight? Listen to him. About that date tonight. I'm very sorry. I'm busy. Dr. Bartok. Well, you... Here he comes. What do you think? Dead ringer, huh? But what a difference. Don't kid yourself. If you knew me the way you know him, you'd probably change your mind. So long. You've been away from your desk for three hours. Three hours and ten minutes, to be exact. Don't you think you owe me an explanation? I was delayed. Very interesting. What if I may ask delayed you? I don't know. I walked around. I took a walk. You took a walk? Yes, Mr. Thompson. I felt like walking, Mr. Thompson. Here, don't you turn your back on Get me. your hands off me. I'm not going to listen to me. Ah, why do you... Got yourself fired. You know that. It's about time I had enough of this place. Don't you need the job? No. What are you going to do? Retire? That's right. That's very nice. It just takes a little dough, you know. Did you get the message? What message? There was a telephone call for you. Yes? Who? Did you leave a name? Were you getting excited about it? It was just your brother. Oh. He wants to see you. He's at the Hotel Frazier. Thanks. I knew something was wrong the minute I found out you took that job at Michael John's. What's the matter? What do you want? They started coming around, looking for you. Who came around? Friends of yours. They said they wanted to reach you. They were no friends, John. They were Rocky Stancic boys. How do you know? I checked it in the department. I found out all right. When did they come? Three or four weeks ago. 
It'll blow over. I lose interest. You think so? There's a friend of yours. What? Marcy. It added up, explained everything. I remember Marcy. The way the two of you went running around. I remember his big cars, his fancy suits, his haberdashery. Why didn't you stay home and mind your own business? Don't you see what you did, you fool? You brought him straight to me. Nobody followed me. Don't worry, I watched out. What do you know about it? You ran around. Good times, girls. You were special. You never followed the rules. There were no rules for you. Would you believe it? I think I wanted to see you get away with it. You were everything I wasn't, everything I wanted to be, everything we all like to be. Only we know better. We don't take the chances. We know sooner or later it always catches up with you. Leave me alone, Freddy. Don't give me any lectures. Where are you going to go? What are you going to do? Marcy tried Mexico. It didn't help. You see, you look just like Dr. Bartok. This was you. A real double down to the last detail. What do you think? Dead ringer, huh? Where are you going to go? What are you going to do? Marcy tried Mexico. It didn't help. Bartok, that's it. They won't 
find me. Maybe I can get away with it. There are a lot of people like that. They don't know what they're running around for, but they keep it up. If they had any sense at all in their heads, they would stop all this foolishness, wouldn't they? And ask themselves what they're getting out of life. Now, there is you. Me? She goes to the office every morning, does her work, comes home at night, washes out a pair of stockings in the bathroom sink. She could do better? I don't know. I suppose she could. Listen. What? You didn't call me up and keep after me just to take me to the zoo. No? Something's going on in that head of yours. I can read it in your eyes. We are both doing a lot of eye reading here. Only I don't know what I see in yours. What are you talking about? What are you trying to tell me? Nothing. The facts of life. What about the facts of life? Listen, I'm just a guy out with a girl on a Sunday afternoon, working on her in a nice, normal way, trying to get acquainted. What's the matter? Are you afraid? Don't worry. I don't get frightened. Then what is it, that guy Barton? What about Barton? Well, what about him? Is that the reason are you and... Uh... Don't take too much for granted. A girl has to have a social life. The things that come out of that sweet baby face of yours. Don't run away with yourself. Take it easy. Why do I like you? My baby blue eyes. You don't think you're going to put anything over on me, do you? Did you ever notice? Pretty girls nowadays walk around with an angry look on their face all the time. What kind of a chump do you take me for, anyway? They're suspicious, always watching out. They're just like misers. I know you, inside out. What you're thinking, every minute, I know exactly what you are. What do you mean, like misers? Well, you know, a miser's always afraid that somebody's scheming to rob him, to take him. What do you mean you know what I am? What am I? You're one of those... What? You heard me. Well, somebody generally is, isn't it? Generally is what? Trying to take somebody. Oh. Well, what are my chances? When you start walking on your head. And now, thanks very much for dinner and everything, and I want to go home. If you think I'm going to get myself mixed up with you, you're crazy. You're pretty good and you've got star, but first comes you, second comes you, third comes you, and after that comes you. You're one of those egotistical smart Alex with big ideas. You think you've got a right to get away with murder, and I imagine you often do, but not with me. It's a cinch. You are dead. No woman alive could possibly resist a man as attractive as all that. You don't want me to get all wet and take you to the door, do you? You can make it by yourself. Sure. What's the matter now? You had to pick on Sunday. How a working girl hates Sunday evenings. Come on. Let's have some coffee. What do they mean by scopophobia? Morbid fear some people have of being seen or looked at. What's Corsica's syndrome? False memories, remembering things that never happened. What are you fishing around for? I really know a lot about psychoanalysis. So do you. Oh, I work for analysis. I've told you I studied for years. I can't let you see Dr. Bartok's files. And don't. Those records are supposed to be confidential. Forget it. I was just curious to see how he handled his patients. Well, it stopped raining. Yes. Johnny.
trying to do, get me fired? No, why? Shh, he'll hear you. I'm not supposed to have personal visitors. What would he think if he saw you? Oh, I see what you mean. Very complicated kind of life you lead. Oh, stop it, Johnny. Get out of here. What's that? What? Nothing. Go on. What is it, Evelyn? Recording tape? Oh, yes, he dictates his notes and I type them. You certainly take a lot of interest in Dr. Bartok. Well, we have so much in common. Now, wait a minute. Now, just get out here. Not here. What's the matter with you? Don't take chances. You take chances. Will you get some sense into your head? When do I see you tonight? You don't. I'm having my hair done. What time is your appointment? Seven. I'll pick you up when you get through. Where is it? Vincent's Wilshire at Laurel. Vincent's Wilshire at Laurel. Put it right in that pocket. didn't come from the five and ten. You don't like it? It just goes to show how wrong a girl can be. What do you mean? I was positive this beautiful thing between us was good for another ten or fifteen weeks at least. It isn't? Well, it's about ten o'clock now. By twelve, you'd have it all worked out. Goodbye, darling, and good luck. It's all over, isn't that right? You don't bet an eyelash. I just stepped in and saved you a couple of hours. That's what I always liked about you. You're so quick. You're a neat worker yourself. Well, we're both prejudiced. Are you sore? No, why should I be? What do you think I expected? Tell me, how are you going to put it? How was I going to put what? I'm just curious. What kind of a story were you going to give me? A nice story. And it's true, too. I'm leaving town. What a shame. No, really, I'm. Leaving the country, Paris. Honestly, you couldn't be nicer. I was just making some coffee. Do you want a cup? Oh, thanks. Hey. What? Listen. Just a minute now. Don't knock your arm. What if I told you I was crazy about you? Who said you weren't? So what? No, look, what I mean, Johnny, I really like you. I really like you, too. If only I told you. Paris. You don't trust me. Should I trust you? Maybe I'd be good for you. You'd be surprised. Maybe I could help you. Please, don't help me. Maybe we could make a nice, decent life for ourselves together. Maybe I don't want it. Why don't you just forget it? Come on, Johnny. Evelyn. It's no use. It's no use. Don't get me wrong. I'm not kicking. You saw, darling. No. You'll get over it. I'll live. You'll pass me on the street someday. You'll see me in a restaurant. You won't even know who I am. No, I'll remember you. I think I'd always take the trouble. That's sweet. Goodbye, Johnny. Goodbye.
Any kind of a trick you might want to try, my friend, let me tell you here and now. You'll find we got the answers before you even raise the questions. I bet you do. When you're on a call, don't dilly-dally. It's not your car. Bring it right back to the garage. Tell the girlfriend to take the bus. Sure. Everything here is on the time clock. Written record going in and out. And, of course, that's only one example. I see. Nothing personal. We trust you. Only these days, to stay in business, you got to be a hawk. Otherwise, they rob the shirt right off your back. After all, everybody's human. You got a reference? Reference? Got to have at least one local reference here, otherwise. The Michael John Company. I worked for the Michael John Company. You uh, hesitate. Well, I was fired out of fight. A fist fight? Yes. Is that all? <laughs> That's clean, Truffle. Don't worry. No, thanks. See the porter down there? He'll give you a uniform. Maybe it'll fit. Be agreeable, and we'll all get along. Thanks. Oh, well, one thing more I forgot. Yes? The new men here work the night shift. That's the rule. They get the late hours. Any objections? No. Why should I object? Roger. that just picked up the enlargement. I was in your shop an hour ago. What? No, no, don't make any more prints. Don't give me any sales talk. What happened to the negative? Here's the negative. What do I care? I want the negative back. Never mind my address. Don't send it to me. I'll pick it up myself. Got it? Oh, oh, yeah, yes, sir. Here it is. Uh, just one moment, That's sir. All right, I I'm in a hurry. Did you tell him, Martel? No, he was very gruff, just like before on the phone. He wouldn't let me get a word in. We should worry. I was perfectly willing to make him a corrected print. The average customer? 
They can never spot it. It's not that, Aubrey. It's just that You're all... a conscientious, Artel. I've flopped pictures reverse negatives a hundred times. They never notice. And after all, what's the difference? With his picture, the only difference is, instead of being on the left side of the face, the scar is on the right. Well, is that so terrible? please. A dollar's worth. It'll be a dollar, please. Ain't you gonna check the oil? Okay. Hey, Art. Hey, you. How much do you get for overnight parking? Seventy-five cents. Okay, we'll be back later. caught me in the act. Think nothing of it, Jerry. Why don't you have your supper? Because I don't want it. There are only two or three cars out. I can carry on alone. It's all right. I hope to achieve a career as a professional ballroom dancer. Do you think that's silly? Go right ahead. It appeals to me. I guess I crave the spotlight. All I need is a proper partner. Some young lady who is talented and who would fall in with my ideas. The point is, I wish to create a distinctive dancing style of my own. I'll bet you anything you like, I know exactly what's going on in your mind. Yeah? My height, right? Being short isn't as insuperable a handicap as you might think. 
If your personality is powerful, you can project the illusion of height. Also, they have specially fitted shoes. That's the doctor, Bartok, back from his country with I'll take it. You will? Say thanks. You want to be very careful. What? That ball on your face. Did it get infected? I noticed you still have it taped. Must be weeks now. If neglected, an infection can be a serious thing. No, no, no. In the back. Sorry. And we'll do without any conversation either. What's your trouble, fella? Nothing. Motor's flooded. Want to push? No. Oh, let me give you a hand. It's all right. No, no, let me tell you, fella. I never pass up a man on the road that's in trouble. That's mean, selfish. I don't do that. Couldn't be like that if I tried. Wait. What's the matter with you, Marty? Can't you see he's a mechanic from a garage? He don't need no help from you. Oh, that's right. Oh, excuse me. Sure. I just wanted to help. Well, good night to you, fella. Good night. There must be something wrong, operator. I can't get an answer. Would you check the number for me? Huron, 83831. Dr. Bartok's not at home. I can't understand it. He's never late. The way these doctors push you around nowadays, I tell you, really. I'm not waiting. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I don't blame you for worrying, Miss Holland. The hiker with him last night, he was four hours overdue getting back. Now, four hours, that's certainly suspicious. It certainly don't look kosher. Now, 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 don't get excited. I'll tell you what to do. We fired the guy, the hiker, on the spot, naturally. But we'll get hold of him, don't worry. But in the meantime, look, Miss Hahn, why don't you call the police, see? Yeah, if Dr. Bartok's missing. Yeah, that's right, it's for the police. Just a minute, old thought. There. 
You people, for crying out loud, believe me. He's all right. The boy just delivered his car to him. Yes. Sure, the doctor's driving downtown now. He's probably over there right this minute. Good morning, Dr. Barthorpe. How are you? Morning, Dr. Barthorpe. Morning, Marjorie. Had me going for a minute. Mrs. Nyman canceled off. She wouldn't wait. What happened to you anyway? I was detained. What was the trouble, Victor? Nothing at all. Victor, the way you look. Yes. You're exhausted. You didn't get any sleep at all last night, did you? I was working, reading. Who's outside? Well, you, know, you take at eleven o'clock, Mr. Davis. Yes, Mr. Davis, the retired clothing manufacturer. Uh, give me five minutes, will you, and then send him in. Certainly. Oh, Dr. Bartow. I saw you down in the lobby. I just had to come up while I was still thinking of it. I'm uh, Dr. Swanger, remember, the dentist down on the ground floor? Yes, Doctor. I wanted to talk to you about this for quite some time now. Why don't you come in, Doctor? Oh, come in. thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Why, uh, the funniest thing happened... Uh, about a month ago, I ran into a fellow who looked exactly like you. Hmm. You don't believe it, do you? Interesting. I don't mean it was just a resemblance. One of those things. This was you. A real double down to the last detail. Except, of course, he didn't have a scar on his cheek, naturally. Of course. Yes. <laughs> That's one thing about me. If I do say so myself, I am observant. I, uh, I take everything in. You want to know the reason why? Simple. It's my disposition. Now, I'm not all wrapped up in myself. Why, you take four out of five men and hold a gun to their heads and ask them the color of their wife's eyes, would they know it? Why, of course not. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I'm telling you this. I'm a dentist. You're the psychoanalyst. <laughs> Silly. Yes. Not that you can blame them, of course. While well, the man in the street, he has his own worries and his petty little greeds and preoccupations, etc., etc. Why, they wouldn't notice it if the next fellow was breathing or dying. Now, isn't that a fact? Yes. All they can think about and talk about is themselves. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank goodness I'm not that way at all. I'm not egotistic. No. Well, I, um, I've got to run along my office, and, uh, and you're a pretty busy man yourself. <laughs> well, so long. <laughs> Thank you very much, Doctor. Uh, for what? Oh, oh, it's nothing at all. <laughs> oh, Doctor. Yes? I wanted to ask you, how is your wife? My wife? Yes. Oh, uh, oh, she's fine. Oh, <laughs> yes, yes, she's fine. She's all right. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> I had specifically told them there what I wanted for breakfast. And I made a fuss. I suppose that was small of me. I couldn't help that. I wanted things to go well. It was the first vacation I'd taken in years. But you know, I've worked hard all my life. Never spared myself. Well, I don't want any credit for that. I was reading Thackeray. I prefer the classics, uh, books that have withstood the test of time. I must say, I have no patience with contemporary light reading. I, I asked my wife, uh, no, I, I think I, yes. What I did. And then they went off for a week, my daughters and my son. And there I was, left in the house all by myself. Was that fair, Doctor? Tell me honestly what you think. It isn't that I make demands. The last thing I want to be is a burden to them. I never asked them to wait on me hand and foot the way some mothers do. But after all, I've devoted my whole life to them. 
Surely the least they could do is to show me a little affection, a little consideration. <laughs> Just going to the phone. Is anything wrong? No, I'm fine. Well, aren't you coming? It's late. Uh, uh, darling, I, uh... I can't understand it. You told Maxwell we'd be there by nine. You made a special point. But I'm on my way. Oh. Oh, wait. Uh... What? Where are you? Where do you think? Home. Oh, no, that isn't what I mean, darling. Listen, uh, could you do something for me? Uh, could you meet me at the Wellington? The Hotel Wellington? Yes, in the arcade. Uh... I'll have to make a call there. It'll save time. Well, are you going to be very long? Uh, no, I'll meet you in half an hour. Oh, darling. Yes? Um, uh, I want you to stop in at the florist there and get yourself an orchid. An orchid? Yes, I want you to have it. Uh, uh, tell them to charge it to my account. All right. I'll meet you at the Wellington. Good. And don't forget the orchid. What's going on? Weddings, weddings. Guess. Darling. You see? I got your orchid. Yes, I notice. They're probably wondering right now what happened to us. Better hurry. Uh, yes, uh, wait. What is it, Victor? Uh, nothing, I was wondering. Uh, do we really have to go to Maxwell's tonight? Do we? <laughs> you know those boys. If we don't show up, they'll think we're running on them or something. Yes, they would, wouldn't they? Uh, listen, who is going to be there tonight? What do you mean, who's going to be there? The usual crowd. Yes, of course. Oh, darling, uh, would you like to drive my car to Maxwell's? What? I thought you might enjoy it. Enjoy it? I'd love it. You know I've been wanting to drive that car for weeks. Well, all you had to do was say so. You're looking very well this evening, Victor. Am I? Mm-hmm. Very handsome. Thank you, dear. Shall we go? Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, Dr. Bartow. Good evening. just going to say I've been cashing a lot of bonds lately, haven't I? Hello, Doctor. Hello. You always take a chance in the gamble. Good evening, Dr. Bartow. Good evening. You're coming around to Maxwell's quite often these days. Two or three times a week, huh, Doc? I guess you're right. Take care now. Don't let them rob you. Good evening, Miss Taylor. Hello. 
Richard? Come along. Same tonight, Dr. Bartok? The same, Frank. I'll put it on your account. It's Harry. I'm sorry, Harry. Hi, Virginia. Hello, Marjorie. Sit down, Virginia. Thank you. Make a play. Put him down. You know, it's very strange. I didn't think of it until just now. You didn't think of what, Mrs. Nevis? Your methods. I don't know what it was, but they weren't quite the same today, were they? We vary our procedures from time to time, Mrs. Nielsen. We like to see what results we get. Well, I must say that things went much smoother today, though, didn't they? Yes, I think so, Mrs. Nielsen. Thank you. Goodbye, Doctor. Goodbye, Mrs. Nielsen. I told them to send up a tray around seven. You're really putting in long hours, aren't you? Yes. I guess I'll run along. Good night. Evelyn. Yes? Come here. What is it? Look at me. What? You've been watching me all day, haven't you? Have I? Is there anything peculiar about me? No, of course not. Then why do you watch me? What are you worried about? I don't know. Something troubling you? No. Yes. Well, tell me. You've been so strange. Really? You've been avoiding me. Do you blame me? What do you mean? What do you think I am, Evelyn? Don't I know? Know what? You've been seeing somebody. Oh, come now. All right, I don't mind. I was just curious. Well, isn't it true? No, it's not. Are you sure? I'm sure. Then, uh, why do you turn away? Does this embarrass you? I don't know what you want. It's late. What do you do? Give you a bad time? I don't want to stay here and quarrel. I don't feel like it. What happened? Did he hurt you? Do I look hurt? I should say you do. Well, don't fool yourself. You don't get hurt these days. No? No, it's very simple. You never expect anything, so you're never disappointed. You're a bitter little lady. It's a bitter little world, full of sad surprises, and you don't go around letting people hurt you. I'll tell you something. In all my life, I think I've only had one beau I was really willing to trust. Should have held on to him, married him. I wanted to, but I couldn't. He was 12 years old, and I was nine. Are you sorry for yourself? No, because for one thing, it's too late, and what's the use? Because you never can go back and start again. Because the older you grow, the worse everything turns out. You don't see it happening to you, it just happens. You wake up one morning and there you are and anything goes and that's all right too. Now, does that upset you, Dr. Bartok? It doesn't bother me at all. Anytime you say, I can quit. I would never let you go, Evelyn. That's nice, thanks. I would miss you badly. You don't know how much I would miss you. They're not in business to worry about people or their whereabouts. They couldn't afford it. Maybe he knew people here, had friends. If I could talk to them, I've got to find them. I don't know of any other place I can start from. Bartlett Anderson. You know anything about a man named Muller? John Muller, guy we fired a couple of months ago thereabouts. Hmm? Mm-hmm. No, he doesn't know anything about... What? Oh, just a minute. Reference. Okay. All right, Bartlett. Thanks. You might try this place, the garage. Clover Garage. You'll have a long wait. The patient just went in. That's all right. I'm afraid we never noticed the different hikers. To tell the truth, I don't know what made you think of coming here. 
Well, they told me at the garage the last call he went on was with Dr. Bartog. I suppose it was. He was gone for four hours that night. I heard about it. They fired him. Yes. Something may have happened. I don't know. It just might be the doctor remembers him. You see, my brother was interested in psychoanalysis. Went to medical school. Dr. Bartog might be able to give me some kind of lead. Nothing else to go on. Why don't you wait? Sit down. Thank you. There he is. That's my brother. I'm sorry. The resemblance. For a minute I thought... What can I do for you? I came here... I'm trying to locate my brother. He worked for a garage you use. His name was John Muller. Do you know him? Do you know where he is? Miss Hahn. He went to Europe. To Paris. Don't go. Tell me. That's all I know. Leave me alone. Wait. Stay here. I'll be right back. Hold on to yourself. I should have known it from the start. So you know, so what? Don't you think I expected you to find out sooner or later? Where are you? No. Why? What's the matter? Do you trust me? Sure, I trust you. You're a fool. What can you do? Go to the police? You've got more sense than that. What good will it do you or anybody else? What good will it do me if I don't? Plenty. The two of us together. This, don't you see it? I'm Bartok. Who's going to know? Who'll ever find out? You killed him. I had to. I was in a jam. I had killers on me. It was the only way out. I took it. I had to take it. You don't have to explain to me. I'm not shocked. I'm not supposed to be. Listen. I didn't give you away, did I? I lied. What more do you want? Wait. Let me get rid of him. I've got a patient in the office. Wait for me. Can I see her again? Can I talk to her? She told you everything she knows. You don't understand. No, I don't. My brother's in trouble. He's hiding out. He thinks they're killers after him, a man named Stansick. But they're not. What? Nobody's looking for him. Uh, what do you mean? I work for the government. I know people. They uh, tip me off. They got this man Stansick. Income tax charges. They're deporting him in another month or so. They've already broken up his crowd. My brother's safe in the clear and he doesn't know it. There's no telling what he might do. You don't know him. He's smart, got big ideas, willing to take any kind of chance. I've got to stop him before it's too late. Don't worry about him. What? Take care of yourself. People like him don't need your help. I don't... I know them. I've started their cases by the dozens. Whether we like it or not, the fact is they're the ones who know what they want. They always get it. I've studied their cases, too, where I work in the welfare department. Well, perhaps you are right. It doesn't matter. I'm afraid there's nothing else we can do for you here. Miss Hahn doesn't know his address or anything like that. I see. I'm sorry for the trouble I've caused you. Not at all. Goodbye. Forgive me, I've kept you waiting, Mrs. Nielsen. Oh, that's all right, Doctor. I'm terribly sorry, but I'm afraid we have to cancel this appointment. I had a call, an emergency. Oh, well, I understand. I'll see you tomorrow, Doctor. Yes, tomorrow, Mrs. Nielsen. Goodbye, Doctor. Goodbye. I'm rushed for time, Virginia. What is it? No, I can't go to Maxwell's tonight. What? I'll explain later. I can't talk now. No, no, nothing is wrong. Of course I'm not going any place. What put that idea into your head? Call me later. Call me tomorrow. Goodbye.
happened to you? What are you doing? Honolulu, you're sailing tonight. What kind of a deal did you make? It's always a deal. Who did you talk to? Nobody. Did you tell me to the police? You don't have to worry. What are you running away for? How do you think I feel? Give it time. It passes. You'll get over it. You get over it. Sure. Use your head. I took all the chances. I worked it out. Now is the time to cash in, both of us. I don't want it. I mean that. It's not worth it. Oh, be smart. I'm sick of being smart, waiting for time to pass, waiting to get over it. Don't talk like a kid. I booked passage on the first boat going out because I want to get away as fast and as far as I can. Why? Because I'm sick of being wise. What are you trying to give me? I'm tired of knowing all the answers. Where did you get off pulling this talk on me? Where did you learn it? You take care of yourself and that's all. A dollar's a dollar. Yes. Watch out for number one. Always play it for yourself. That's right. Did he worry for you? Did he worry for Bardock? Did anyone bother to notice the difference? I hate it. Hate it or don't hate it. Who is asking you? This is the way it is and you know it. You've been around long enough. I hate everything I know. I hate everything in me. I hate you. I hate, I hate, I hate. I didn't make it that way. I can't change it. What do you want me to do? <laughs> I'm going with you. Yeah. We'll go together tonight. You don't think I believe that, do you? Give me time. Let me fix it at the office. I don't want them to go looking for Bartok for me. You're Bartok. You've got it all now. You're not going anywhere. I'll meet you on the boat. You say it, but you won't. You've got a good thing now. It's rich. You'll never let it go. Not you. You've got too much sense. I'll be there. You won't. That's right, Doctor. I've talked to the building superintendent. He'll give the keys to your secretary. Yes, you'll find the names and addresses of my patients in the desk. I'm sure you'll be able to handle them all between you, Dr. Henning, and Dr. Crayman. Yes, I, I'm afraid it was sudden. I wasn't at all prepared. Well, thank you very much for making it possible. Thank you, Doctor. Goodbye. I hope you don't mind it if I talk to you. What do you want? The scar. It's so clear in my mind. I always somehow thought it was on the other side. Did you notice that? What? I know I'm mistaken. Uh, the scar, I mean. Of course, I'm wrong. Yes. Good night. Good night, Doctor. Step on it, will you? Okay.
paid. Where can I get a porter? They're all busy. Ship's sailing in a few minutes now. Here. You got the wrong guy. I'm not Bartok. You're not? I know Bartok. I look like him, sure, but my name is Muller. Look, you fool's the scar. This is on the left side. What did it do? Move over. Now, wait a minute. Let me go. I can square this thing. I'll send you the money. I'll bet you will. Let me go. I've got to make that boat. You're not getting on that boat, Dr. Bartok. Let me go! We heard some shots. You did. The cops just caught him, ran right into him. Well, did anybody get hurt? I don't know. 